Let me introduce Stuart Lenz. Um, he has a BA in Chemical Engineering and a Master's in Teaching, Learning, and Teacher Education, and a PhD in Educational Leadership and Higher Education, all from UNL. After receiving his Master's and Teacher Certification in Secondary Mathematics, he accepted a teaching position at North Star High School in Lincoln, Nebraska, where he taught algebra, geometry, and advanced algebra, as well as implement and instruct a math intervention program. Stewart will be the assistant principal for North Platte High School starting this coming year. So let's welcome Stuart. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you again for having me here. Um, like I said, I just recently graduated this May uh, with my doctorate, so um, people call me Dr. Lenz. It's still a little weird for me, um, but I'm going to take advantage of it. Um, I did uh, just recently um, just, uh, finish my dissertation, so I'm going to be telling, talking about the process I went through, the decisions I made, and um, kind of how that all went. My dissertation was titled Diffusion of Math Intervention Program at the Secondary Setting. Uh, it was a convergent mixed method study. Um, Basically, it, it took a long time. Um, I, I did a three-year study um, on, on an intervention program that was being implemented uh, and seeing how teachers, um, what was influencing their use of the program, why they were using the program, um, and then seeing what their influence was to continue to use that program over those next three years. Um, so we looked at levels of use and how that level of use changed, uh, how their stages of concerns and concerns about the program changed over three years, and really how the success of the program was changing over those three years as well. Uh, so I was taking a lot of data, um, statistical data, on the program success, student use, teacher use, things like that. Um, that was all numbers, quantitative, and then I was doing interviews with teachers uh, to collect what was qualitative and kind of mix those together uh, to create uh, my conclusion and theory. So uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, it really sucks you in, especially when you're in it for three years, um, and it just kind of becomes your life. And so the dissertation itself wasn't horrible uh, for me because I, I lived it so long and it took me such a long process collecting the data and everything that I was just doing it a little bit at a time, and it, and it really just kind of came together at the end. So um, these were kind of questions I was given to talk about, so I just kind of uh, wrote down some notes on them. So, how do you conceptualize or decide on a research topic? Um, really, when it came down to me, uh, it, was, it was meeting and having conversations with my advisor. Um, Dr. Grady was my advisor. Um, and that was the biggest resource for me was sitting down and just having those serious conversations with your advisor and saying, what do you want to do you know, in your life? Where are you wanting to go? What's your interest? What's your passion? Um, and let's try to find something that we can do that connects those things. Um, and so it was just having that conversation and we sat down very early in my program, which was a big advantage for me because when we sat down early enough, I really got a conceptual idea of what I wanted to do with my dissertation before I jumped into a bunch of my coursework. Um, so I was able to really take that idea and refine it and develop it throughout my whole study and, and my whole program. So. Um, Find research and books. So they talk about finding the gap in the literature. You know, that's, I mean, you, can, you don't want to repeat the study that's been done already. So you got to go to the literature, start reading about it, and find out what's missing out there. Um, and this was something that I did find, was that math intervention or intervention programs as a whole is not a brand new thing. But there was very little out there in terms of things that are being done at high school level and things being done um, the way this program was structured. It was something that was not in the literature already. And so I was getting ideas from previous studies, but really finding that gap and really figuring out, okay, this is actually going to fill um, a gap in the literature and the research out there. Uh, find something you have an interest in. Again, this was something, um, I was a math interventionist, uh, and so this was something I was kind of living and breathing, and I was definitely passionate about. And so it was something that just connected to what I was doing in my life and very interesting to me. Um, so again, the study wasn't difficult for me in the fact of collecting the data and it made sense and um, writing about it was something that wasn't tedious in terms of um, 
taking the time to do that because my passion was there. And so it was just, it actually kind of can be, became enjoyable. Um, and then again, don't try to conquer too much. Um, this was something I did try to do a little bit. Um, and, and it kind of, I, I got scared for a while that I was doing too much and this was gonna just turn into, you know, this huge thing I was never gonna get done. Um, but I was advised by a number of people, don't conquer the world in your dissertation. So, you know, decide what you wanna do and kind of narrow it down. Um, but don't take on everything. So when I'm doing the math intervention program, it's, you know, don't look at every single program in the world and don't try to, you know, take every single piece that could connect to it and try to develop this massive study, but really just refine it down, narrow your focus, and it will help you um, to kind of keep it in a manageable realm uh, to where you can get it done and accomplish it. So, um, all right. How can coursework be used to assist in the design and implementation of a thesis or dissertation? Um, so try to know your topic again before you take <coughs> your methods. This was again something that really helped me knowing my topic going into my methods because um, I had basically developed the first part of my dissertation, the proposal, uh, before I even went into my first uh, methods courses. So when I took the first level, I took two, two levels of qualitative methods. Before I took the first level, um, I had kind of the initial idea the pilot kind of done. I kind of piloted a, a survey out with some teachers. Um, and I had some data already there and some writing done. And so what I did is, or my final project in that qualitative methods was really me just refining the beginning part of my dissertation. Um, and so it just allowed me time in the coursework to write my dissertation, uh, which is hugely valuable, uh, opposed to taking time outside of all my coursework to do it. Um, and so, plus, when I took it into the course, I was getting feedback from uh, a professor, I was getting feedback from Peters, um, and, and I was just really getting some good ideas in terms of what I could do to continue to refine those first chapters of my study. Um, so, and then when I went into the second level of qualitative, I actually, again, did the same thing. I just kept working on it and just continued that project. Um, and so, by the time I got done with methods, I mean, a lot of the work was set in stone. I, I built um, my design, uh, the, the graph or chart or uh, diagram of my study design that I built in my mixed methods course. Um, and all of that stuff was used directly into my dissertation. Um, there, you can find them in there. Um, and that was stuff done from the coursework itself. So uh, if you can do that before you come up with your topic, before you go in those courses, um, that's great. I found it highly uh, advantageous. Um, again, you can use non-method courses to find those topics. Um, I took a lot of coursework before I did my methods and just, you know, discovering, you know, is this area, is law something I'm really passionate about? You know, is leadership something I'm really passionate about? Um, you know, and that was one of the courses that did um, add to my study. I took the educational leadership course, um, I found, uh, the concerns-based adoption model, CBAMP, is one of the things we talked about. And that was one of the founding theories in my study. Um, and it was, again, helped fuel kind of figuring out what do I want to do, um, where is this going to go. So, and then using peers again and seeing what others are doing. When you presented uh, at the end of those qualitative uh, methods courses and any of them, you're seeing what other people are doing in projects. And you're seeing how they're doing their research, are they doing surveys, are they doing interviews, are they doing statistics, and kind of the, the hurdles they're running into and things, and you're just kind of thinking, okay, that's kind of like mine, and this is maybe something I should tweak, or like you said, maybe something I should avoid, um, <laughs> but uh, it, 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 it is nice to hear what other people are doing, and people are kind of in the same area as you in terms of working on their proposals and things like that, so you get a lot of that good feedback. Um, another thing you can do, um, I presented a couple of years at the WELL conference, um, and even though my dissertation wasn't completed, I was able to present what I had in front of a group of people, professionals, um, and they were able to continue to give me more feedback. So if you had those opportunities, um, I was scared at first to present um, an incomplete study at a conference, but you can present what you have and talk about it. and. and People are going to be there and they're going to give you feedback and it's going to help you develop that. 
that study even further. Um, all right, so how can stu uh, students take a broad interest and narrow it down? So again, we talked about don't conquer the world. Um, use the research to find the gaps. So again, if I'm interested in intervention, um, you know, you can go out and look at research and intervention, um, but there's find the gap of the research is going to help you narrow that down. If everything's been done um, with, you know, certain areas or certain topics, um, then you can just start crossing those off that list, and then you really just start to narrow it down to okay, this is what's missing. This is what I'm going to focus on, uh, trying to answer and, and figure out. Start developing research questions and try to decide which are uh, most interest. What do you really want to find? So the question again is, uh, what are you passionate about? You know, and did you really do you want to discover the effectiveness, effectiveness of the program? Do you want to figure out uh, how teachers view the program? Do you want to view, uh, you know, what is it you really want to look at and, and discover at the end? And then that again helps you kind of narrow, you know, what type of design am I going to use? How long is this going to take? Because um, I had to go three years because I wanted to know how they were changing <coughs> over time. If that was not something that I was concerned about, then there's no point in me taking three years to find data. I could do it in one semester, snapshot, in and out. But that wasn't what I wanted to find. And part of this helped me was um, Dr. Grady and I, we shot emails back and forth, I think it was about two weeks or so, and every day I was shooting her ideas and topics and questions and, and it just, again, helped me to kind of narrow down what I really wanted to do. And you kind of started to see what was repeating and things that I was uh, sending her. And she was able to give me feedback. So if you've got somebody that you can use as that soundboard, um, it's going to take that time to really work with you uh, to refine some of those research questions and, and ideas. Use those people um, as much as you can. And then, again, the study will guide you. Once you kind of figure out what you want to do and you start getting into the study uh, and your research, it will guide you as you go. Um, it will kind of take you in the direction that you need to go. Um, so, you know, you got to plan ahead and you got to know what you're doing before you go in. But let the study also guide you as you collect data and do the research. Um, and it will come out to be a lot, uh, I think, a deeper study when you allow that to happen. Uh, what resources have been helpful? The libraries, um, I had a meeting with one of the librarians, they met with me, um, I told them my topic, what I wanted, they helped me a lot in terms of what to, to type in as keywords, um, what searches to use, where to go, uh, they gave me a list of all these things that they had found, um, it was a great resource for me to use uh, for that literature review and, and, and really just understanding where I need to go and how to find those, uh, those sources. Once you start finding literature, it builds itself because you can start looking at, you know, bibliographies and you start seeing, okay, what other studies were cited in this and then I haven't, I haven't seen that or I haven't looked at that. So then you just start connecting all that literature together. It starts building itself back up. Um, I use three main uh, theories in, in mine. Um, and one of them was a book that Dr. Grady gave me from the very beginning. Uh, it's called Diffusion Innovations. And uh, that kind of sparked one of the theories that I found, the CBAM theory, in my leadership class. And then um, as I was looking at change, there's a change theory from Michael Follin. And those were kind of the three I used, and I built them together um, in my literature review. But then you can really start finding those connections. But uh, the library was great. The Near Center was something I found too late, to be honest with you. Um, they helped me with the analysis, uh, with the statistics on my, uh, my study. Um, but I wish I would have gone to them before I even started the study um, because they were, they were a great resource in terms of they've got people that are there for quantitative, they've got people there for qualitative, they've got people there for mixed methods. Um, any study you might be doing, they have somebody there that can help you out. Um, and that's a resource that was hugely valuable. I went in there after I was done, I showed them some of my stuff and they're like, oh man, I wish you would have come because if, if you would have done it like this, we could have done this. And I'm like, oh man, so I can't go back. Um, but uh, they can give you advice going forward if you have an in initial like survey or something. They can give you some feedback in terms of what, what you would need to do, how to accomplish that. Uh, they did a great job of helping me analyze all my data, uh, how to explain that. They sat with me, they explained the data. They didn't just give it to me in a file and say, have fun, make, make sense of it. Uh, they sat with me and talked me through it. 
Um, and I used those, those tables and some of that stuff they gave me directly into my dissertation. Um, so that was a great resource. And it's, again, it's right here in the building. Um, it's, it, you know, upstairs across the hall. I mean, you don't even know it. So um, transcriptionist, I transcribed all my uh, interviews myself, um, which I'm going to tell you is not fun. But I did it for the value of understanding the data and just being in it. Um, I felt if I took the time to type it out myself and, and to really just listen to the interviews over and over again, you know, I'm just going to soak in that information even more. Um, so I took the time to do it, uh, but I also interviewed every semester uh, for three years, so I had some gaps in time to do that. If you want to pay someone to do it, you can. I know a lot of people do. Um, use your advisor, use your peers and previously complete, uh, completed dissertations, I pulled a few out and used them a lot as references in terms of formatting, things like that when you get to the end, um, and just seeing how they kind of structured what they did. Uh, issues, IRB, I didn't have a lot of issues with IRB, but I also avoided interviewing students because we didn't want to introduce um, my, uh, you know, underage children into the study that would cause some red tape. So. Um, I also found out at that point you have IRB with the school districts as well, so it's not only college IRB, but you have districts IRB. So if you're going to be going to a bunch of districts, just understand each of them might have their own IRB. So it's kind of like chicken and the egg. One of them wants approval from the other, and then you, but somebody's got to approve first. And so you just kind of work with that, but just be aware of that. You got CITI training uh, that's online uh, through the university. Plan ahead. Um, don't be afraid to ask others for help and, and just don't take a break. Um, I did it for three years, but every semester I was working. I was transcribing interviews. I was putting stuff together. I was using my methods courses. I just didn't stop it. Um, and then when I got to the end, it really was just polishing it up, putting it all in in a nice little case and a present of a bow on top, and we're good to go. So um, really don't lose the momentum. So. Um, this is my completed bound dissertation. Um, if anybody wants to look at it, you can. Uh, so yeah, are there any questions you guys have? started my doctoral program probably back in 09, 10. So I've been in it for quite a while. Um, when, I cons when we came up with the topic idea, um, we had to move quick um, because the program was just starting. Um, and if I wanted to get initial information and data on teacher using the program right away, we had to get it going. So um, when, I, when I found out what I wanted to do, we kind of rushed through. Uh, proposal, the IRB got everything together, and then we started collecting data right away. And then again, I went three years collecting data, and then it took me another oh, half a year to a year of writing after that. So it was probably four, four years or so. So, but that's because again, I, I did a longitudinal study um, that took me a long time to really collect that information and, and process through it. Um, a lot of people don't take that long. I mean, you can do a study that you understand your topic, you get the proposal done, you get the idea, you do a survey one time, you analyze, and then you, I mean, it's, it's going to take you a while to write after that, that point anyway, but yeah, mine just took longer because of the longer to the aspect of the study. Any other questions?